Colleagues call him affable. Alam and I remember him as a warm-hearted soul who personifies humility and gracious leadership. Our guest for the podcast today needs no introduction. A teacher, a policy maker, a writer, a crusader for real estate and urban development reforms, who has come a long way from being a student of this esteemed institution to being at the helm of affairs. With us here today is Professor Dr. P. S. N. Rao, Dean, School of Planning and Architecture. Professor Rao is a distinguished figure in architecture, town planning and urban development in India. With over 35 years of experience as an academician, consultant, policy advocate and advisor, he has held various prominent positions. In fact, he has held the highest position in SPA Delhi as its Vice Chancellor from 2018 to 2023. A prolific author, Professor Rao, to his credit, has four books and over 130 papers contributing significantly to education and town planning. Hello and welcome to Changemakers Unplugged, Amplifying Voices, Inspiring Action, a podcast by IP Global, one of the largest South-based social sector organization with over 25 years of experience in international development across Africa, Asia and Europe. I'm your host Shilpi and you're listening to Changemakers Unplugged, a special series commemorating IP Global's 25th anniversary, where we bring you a conversation that delves deep into the inspiring journeys and groundbreaking contributions of remarkable individuals who, like us, are committed to transforming lives. All right, great. Thank you so much, Professor Rao, for being with us on Changemakers Unplugged. Thank you. So, Professor Rao, from being a student at SPA to now becoming its dean, tell us about your journey, your experience, and the changes that you've seen, both as a student and as a professor. It's been a very long journey, uh, more than uh, three decades, almost four decades. And every day is a new day, because students these days are very different from the students uh, uh, in those days. When I was a student, the library was the only source for us. So every day uh, we had to go to the library, we had to consult books and then that's the only window to the outside world. Uh, today it's not like that. Uh, the students today, uh, they have the world in their palms. So you've been the chairman of the Institute of Time, Town Planners India. You've been chairman of DUAC, chairman of the jury for the new parliament building and central Vesta redevelopment plan of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Uh, Chairman of Jury for National War Museum, Ministry of Defense, the list goes on. And uh, I don't think we've done justice to all the chairmanships that you've had over the years. But with all this, and now the Dean of SPA, how do you really manage to juggle all these roles? What is your success mantra? Uh, Well, um, people um, uh, refer to me as a workaholic. Maybe I am. I think it's passion, uh, it's passion to know more. Um, I've got my um, limits fixed. My interest is in uh, cities and buildings and uh, that is uh, architecture and town planning. So anything and everything that's happening here is uh, a passion for me. So uh, I would like to gather as much information as possible, uh, not just about events or policies or developments, but also about people. I am also interested in historic facts. Uh, But what is it that has kept me going is my passion for the subject. And more than anything else, uh, I think a a keenness to know more, there is that that inner urge. And um, I think hard work is is very important. Uh, Quite often people say that, uh, I mean, why are you going there and why are you doing this? What is it that you are going to get out of it? Uh, Measuring um, activities with uh, money. So everything doesn't give you money and and if you want to follow your passion then uh, I mean money is uh, secondary. You need money up to a certain point and not beyond that. So uh, whatever I've been doing, I've been doing it um, to fulfill my desire to learn more and and I enjoy doing whatever I'm doing. 
so so and i um, believe in time management i think time management is extremely important sure so you talked about passion and you talked about you know time management and 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 uh, going back into time uh, let's just talk about sadev atal i think uh, you know this was 2018 and you were instrumental in designing this memorial for shri late uh, atal bihari vajpay so it must have been a very profound experience i understand and i mean you know how did you really you know create a balance between really honoring his legacy and uh, creating a space that really resonates with the people so uh, it was a great um, honor for me and then i i set about um, uh, making some conceptual drawings to begin with uh, so i had to do a little bit of reading in order to find out as to uh, how uh, atal bihari vajpayee started his life and what are what are the different uh, facets of his personality so i was um, participating in various meetings in the ministries and other places on on the administrative part of the whole thing Uh, but then uh, looking at the design part of it that was something which i had to do in my personal time and space uh, so this was a balance that had to be done a few days after uh, he passed away this task was uh, assigned to me and uh, so we we got cracking on the job and then uh, we after we did all this so i had to present all this to the secretary in the ministry and then um, they wanted to understand what this concept is all about and, and how are you going to do i mean they they had hundreds of questions because ultimately this has to go to the prime minister's office uh, so uh, the prime minister would himself ask uh, several questions so uh, finally uh, the um, big day happened and then they said that look um, we have uh, made a request to the prime minister of india and then he is going to call us in a couple of days so you better be prepared and we have to go and make the presentation so i went there and then uh, we were told that uh, the pm is obviously the pm so he is very busy and he will not give you so much time so in a few words you need to convey uh, so we took our we were allowed only to take uh, we were not allowed to take our uh, laptops there so we we sent our presentation by email so they had loaded the presentation there so there were only three people in the room uh so um it it was it was quite uh, you know um the prime minister was sitting and i had to sit just by the side of the prime minister so um uh, it it was quite uh, an interesting uh, presentation i was surprised that uh, the pm did not open his mouth for 30 minutes i kept on talking sir this is the first alternative this is the second alternative this is the five different options that we prepared and what is the difference between the first and the second and so on and what are the plus and minus of each of these so he was so patiently listening and then finally after all the um, five alternatives were presented to the honorable prime minister uh, so then he said uh, i think we should go with the first uh, alternative i think that's a good alternative uh, so you need to further develop upon this and then you come back and then um, we'll have one more meeting and then we'll finalize it and then very quickly we need to and he wanted to know what was the material and uh, so on and so forth so there were some uh, quotations of his uh, famous uh, poems that were also to be uh, put up uh, it, it was it was a circular um, i mean for all of you who have seen the monument if i may call it the memorial uh, we because uh, he started uh, with the jansang and 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 yeah. this the symbol of the jansang was a lamp so so we put um, a structure in the center which um, uh, which resembles a lamp so there was an onyx stone that we had put there which uh, represents the flame and then we got the best of granite from uh, a district called khamam in andhra pradesh so uh, i had to make again a second presentation to the prime minister he had uh, called us again so the second time when we went we were trying to explain to him further technicalities and all that but he was only interested in the physicality of the whole thing and then when he looked at it uh, he said that uh, okay i think this is fine and uh, you are the technical guy so you people uh, i know that you you will uh, do the best and uh, you please go ahead uh, you don't have to explain the technicalities to me 
uh, that's your job that's not my job so i think that was a good thing about the prime minister he didn't want to interfere at all and um, he gave us a free hand so that was when the work started and uh, all throughout i was working closely with the cpwd because we need, we we had to i mean we were just given the 25 acres of land so we had to look at exactly which spot uh, this is going to come up uh, at we need to look at that so we looked at the contours and we looked at the highest point there because it's on the banks of the river along the rajghat so uh, we wanted a high spot there and we also had to have a um, separate entry for the vvips to come in uh, every year when they go there so all that was done and then i think in a very short period of time the whole thing was implemented and finally on the uh, inaugural day i was also there uh, the prime minister the president and all the top people they had all come and uh, so it was an exhilarating experience it was an experience of a lifetime and i consider myself uh, extremely lucky um, uh, to have got this opportunity yeah i mean this is such a beautiful uh, experience to have and honestly as you rightly said it's a once in a lifetime experience so you talked about housing and you talked about innovation so i mean first i'm talking about the housing part i mean of course you have a housing background i mean uh, um, linked to that is technology which we also touched upon a little earlier what's your take on the emerging uh, tech housing trends i mean oh, we're yes. talking about 3d printed housing we talk about bubble housing and uh, will these technologies really ensure that cities are not just technologically advanced but also sustainable and inclusive you know of, with all the conversations that we are having of course a couple of years back we had something called the global technology challenge global housing technology challenge and uh, this was at again at the instance of uh, our uh, prime minister Uh, i was a member of that um, committee which um, carried on this challenge and uh, there were as many as uh, 54 um, technologies from across the world that uh, came to india to showcase as a part of this uh, global technology challenge and and from that uh, finally we shortlisted uh, about 6 or 7 of those and then there were lighthouse projects using these uh, latest uh, technologies to develop housing in various uh, parts of the country in uh, six different states of india uh, 1000 apartments each using these new technologies have been put in place and they are almost ready and people have started occupying also these are sustainable uh, affordable uh, modern technologies which are more efficient and so on and and how to do the technology transfer so um, we uh, have been instrumental in introducing a program called uh, navriti meaning uh, it's it's an acronym actually a new and uh, affordable validated innovative technologies for affordable housing in india so this was an acronym which i coined and the ministry agreed to this because because navriti is also showing a new way forward so uh, we uh, i think we are currently doing the 20th uh, program in this series it's an online program where um, uh, a, a large number of uh, professionals uh, offer this program to various architects and engineers across the country so that uh, you have to have a multiplier effect it's not enough of you you do a technology challenge and you build a certain number of houses and then it's a one time effort but then how do you multiply it on a, on a law? and so the young architects the young engineers they all have to know that this is the way forward these are the new technologies this is what is sustainable so uh, leave the old behind and start embracing the new uh, so we are now on that path and and we have also brought out some documents uh, so that this will help this new paradigm shift in uh, te- technology for housing uh, that is happening but uh, again as i said we have a very very long way to go but then we have to begin somewhere so we began at uh, zero and uh, we are now moving forward so so hopefully so i'm understanding uh, professor rao you talked about uh, you know um, uh, housing and you talked about uh, sustainability linked to it and uh, another very important component is environment sustainability because we all know that cities and climate are also connected so uh, i mean how, how how what is your take on that sir yes uh, i think environment is an extremely important area and um, 
uh, I started realizing this when I was put on an uh, expert appraisal committee on environment in the Ministry of Environment and Forests. I was there as a member for uh, three years and I could see that these meetings would go on for three days continuously every month. And uh, I, I uh, was surprised to see that there are so many projects that are coming to the ministry uh, for getting the environmental clearance. And then the kind of an impact they are having on environment is humongous, uh, uh, unimaginable. So when I started facing these uh, right in front of me, um, then I realized that these are, these are areas which are extremely important. I also was a member on the um, National Wetlands Committee. Uh, there are a large number of lakes and water bodies which are called the wetlands. And, and the way in which the wetlands are being um, destroyed is something uh, that, that, is, that is really very shocking. Uh, so, uh, these had given me opportunities to um, get myself acquainted with this area. And I believe that uh, we need to put environment right at the top. Uh, development does not always mean building more. Development also means freezing certain areas, not building at all or building in a different manner. That is also development. Not destroying, uh, not cutting down trees is also development. Uh, development by way of cutting trees is not development actually. So one has to be very, very careful when you talk about development. It's not just mindless clearing sites and building. But there, there, there are alternative ways in which you can uh, look at it. I was also chairing a committee uh, at the Niti Ayog uh, on uh, hill area uh, architecture and planning. And uh, that was one area which I, uh, one, one assignment which I really enjoyed uh, because uh, hill areas are uh, very, very environmentally sensitive and, and all our hill stations are uh, completely being ruined today with over-tourism and over-exploitation, widening of hill roads and doing all kinds of things. And you've seen Joshimat and several other things that have happened in the recent past. So these disasters are a wake-up call for us. Uh, even the urban flooding that's happening in our cities is a wake-up call for us. So, environment, uh, so, so wherever uh, it was possible, I have tried to emphasize on the importance of uh, urban environment. Uh, man and nature relationship is extremely important. Uh, it's not only the um, plants or the trees or the air or the water. Uh, it's also the animals the birds and the butterflies and the bees, as they say, uh, they are very important. You find that uh, today uh, uh, tigers are rushing out uh, from the uh, forests because, because the man-tiger conflict, uh, the man-animal conflict is also becoming very serious. So I think we need to take uh, development in a very comprehensive uh, manner. Yes, and when we talk about development in the in a comprehensive manner, uh, as you very rightly said, you know, people and planet are actually connected. You know, uh, linked to that is also the role of various stakeholders. When we talk about stakeholders, we're talking about uh, even the private sector. You know, there's an increased conversation these days about public-private partnerships. So, where do you really see the role of private sector in advancing this infrastructure and playing a catalytic role in negating these urban challenges? Yeah, the private sector has a major role to play because uh, private capital is required to be brought into the urban sector. There are no uh, two ways about it because don't expect the government to do all the spending. Government has other responsibilities as well. Uh, so, government can get more money only by taxing you more. Uh, so, there are various methods, um, but then ultimately the private sector can come in. So, in the highways, the private sector has come in in a very big way. Uh, instant capital is available and then they put in the capital and they try to plow it back. But then uh, when you are dealing with the private sector, you have to be very careful because uh, private interests uh, in terms of uh, profit making are obviously there. That's what private enterprise is all about. That's what capitalism is all about. But then nowadays uh, you do find that the private sector is also sensitized to the environmental uh, requirements. So they are also doing a lot of corporate social responsibility, environmental social responsibility. Uh, the, the private sector, um, there are many companies, I will not name them. They are doing a lot of good work in the area of environment. They are very sensitive in their projects to ensure that their projects are green projects. Uh, 
so uh, it's a positive development and and the government has a responsibility to uh, ensure that that this happens uh, so you need regulation uh, and at the same time you also need nudging and and uh, awareness and citizens also have to uh, play their role as as um, environmental ombudsmen in that sense uh, so that uh, we take the development uh, forward sure uh, professor rao you mentioned the role of companies is very important what do you have to say for companies like ip global interestingly uh, you know i i think you've been an advisor to ipe global uh, in the initial years and and today it's we are in the 25th year uh, this year so what is your uh, views on organizations like us where we have urban and climate as big verticals firstly i would like to congratulate uh, ipe global uh, you've risen um, you come a long way so hearty congratulations i've been associated in a very very small uh, way in the initial years so um uh, it's it's very nice to hear that you are now in your silver jubilee and i wish you all the best uh, yes i know that uh, because a large number of our students have been working with the ipe global and then i keep uh, meeting them uh, at on various occasions so you you are uh, consulting uh, to various uh, local bodies governments and uh, so on and you have a major role to play in creating uh, these uh, products so uh, the more environmentally aware you are you will be able to better advise uh, these organizations so uh, which which i am sure that you are doing because you appoint uh, you employ a large number of professionals who are well trained and uh, made aware of the environmental responsibilities Yes, and thank you. Uh, so you know, on it, as you rightly said, a lot of SPA alumni work with us, especially in the urban vertical, and they speak very highly of you, Professor Rao. So, what do you feel? How do you feel about the influence that you have had on their, uh, uh, you know, careers and on their life journeys? Uh, I believe that every human being cannot do everything. There are so many things that I would like to do, but I know that I cannot do. so uh, you we we all have to be in it together because this world this planet earth is for all of us uh, not only human beings but other living beings as well who occupy this planet uh, so our job is uh, shaping uh, the minds and the lives of the younger generation and um, that is what we have been doing that is what i have been doing and that is what a teacher is supposed to be doing because uh in an age uh, where the minds are highly impressionable uh, students believe that whatever the teacher is saying is right and then they they move forward in their life uh, so if we are not sending the right image if we are not conducting ourselves in a proper manner and if we don't uphold those um uh, responsibilities or those virtues or those ethics then uh, obviously you cannot expect the younger generation to follow that path so we need to be a role model and uh, we need to uh, guide them and uh, tutor them and uh, later on they will start building lives on their own once they are out of the portals of this institution they are totally on their own and uh, i i do um, bump into my uh, former students maybe at the airport or wherever when i am travelling and then i see that they are all holding positions uh, of great responsibility uh, at various places so so uh, they will carry the message forward and and that is how uh, things have to move forward right that's a beautiful thought uh, thank you professor rao for this engaging conversation but before we wrap up we have a special segment where our listeners get a chance to get a little more up and close with you in a rapid fire round So let's get straight in. Uh, two facts about your work, Professor Rao, and one common misconception. Uh, two facts about my work. Um, well, um, as I said, uh, I like to work and work and work, but I also like to uh, travel and enjoy. Uh, so I believe in uh, punctuality and uh, doing things right, uh, ethics. Um, common misconception: Yes, uh, yeah, people think that I don't socialize much. which is <laughs> perhaps uh, not really true 
I I do have a close circle of friends and uh, I I do socialize. I like to um, pull my hair down <laughs> once in a way. Favorite Indian city for urban planning. Uh, favorite Indian city is Mumbai. One architectural wonder you admire the most. Oh well, there are many. Um, I, uh, I I would not really say one building, but then I would say Paris is one place. A book that has inspired your career. Uh, there are many, but uh, probably um, the Fountainhead. So smart cities or sustainable cities? Yeah, uh, sustainable cities. Your most challenging assignment? Uh, certainly the Atal um, uh, Sadai Atal, the Atal Bihari Bajpayee Memorial. That was the most challenging. And if not a professor, what would you be? Oh, I would probably be a journalist. All right. Uh, one change you wish to see in Indian cities? Uh, I think we need to really clean up Indian cities. There are there are a hundred things that you need to do about Indian cities to set things right. But I think the floor of the city is extremely important. When you come out of your house and you step on to the public realm, the footpaths, the roads, those are the most important things. They are in a terrible shape. Uh, so, so unless and until you clean up uh, the footpaths and the roads and make cities walkable, uh, you can't uh, make cities livable. A piece of advice for today's youth. Yes, uh, you you have to um, love your job. You have to be patriotic and you have to be hardworking. You have to have a purpose in life, and uh, ethics are very very important. I think that's a wrap on this uh, rapid fire segment. That was fantastic. Thank you, Professor Rao, for being with us for this engaging conversation. I we really enjoyed having this chat together. Thank you so much. World Habitat Day is celebrated annually on the first Monday of October each year and is recognized by UN as a platform for discussions and initiatives focused on urban development and housing. 2023 has been a particularly challenging year for urban economies, considering cities are the engine for economic recovery. The future of many countries will be determined by the productivity of its urban areas. And for this economic growth and recovery to be sustainable, we need cities that can absorb, recover and prepare for the future. Leaving you with that thought, that's a wrap on Changemakers Unplugged. Subscribe to this podcast feed for future interviews and for more information on IPE Global, visit ipeglobal.com or follow our LinkedIn page at IPE Global.